Hey everybody, it's Clint. Welcome to Sweetcast. I feel terrible because I had to record this again because I had the volume too loud. So yeah, that was not fun. Here we go again at the correct volume. Uh, welcome, welcome. I want to talk about the culture war in comics. It's kind of nice to, I don't know, just do a reality check every now and then. And I've been thinking about how the past few years that had been so contentious in mainstream comics, and now it seems as though things have really started to calm down, at least, uh, you know, superficially speaking. Now, this I don't think has really changed, but it is nice to see where things are headed. So before we get into that, I want to just show you again, Downcast, this might be the last reminder you get. I think I might, uh, I don't know, we'll see. I might stream or something. Uh, but Downcast is going to be closing the In Demand store. That is because we're basically finished with the interior art. There's just a couple more pages to do. And so if you're one of the 918 backers, thank you so much. I really appreciate your support here. If you have not backed yet, this is your last chance. The link is in the description down below. Really, really appreciate your support. All right, so the culture war in comics, uh, I don't think it's a surprise to say that the culture war in general has not slowed down at all, at least in the United States, I think really in all Western countries. It's a, a pretty big deal right now. Uh, it, and there's a lot of reasons for it, but I really wanted to hone in on comics and entertainment, and this is why. I'm going to read a tweet from just some random person on the internet and think about the symbolism that they're trying to point out that everything has become symbolism. So here we go. The MCU centers around one of the most overtly problematic setups imaginable. Everything about Tony Stark, the Avengers, S.H.I.E.L.D. is emblematic of everything people criticize superhero comics for, real status quo upholding f fashy pro-cop stuff, but there's joker ban jokey banter, so it's fine. Right, so this, in this essentially uh, holds up the problem and tells you what it is, and that is that if activists see entertainment as symbolic of something else, then that symbol needs to change, because if the symbol changes, then therefore the world has changed. This is certainly not something that I'm making up because I, I see this happen all the time. And in fact, this is actually in very uh, broadly used definitions of social justice. And a lot of activists use that kind of uh, terminology and seeking for the symbolic, so to speak. Uh, in comics. So here you go. So social justice. Before it was used as just some kind of an insult uh, or, you know, divisive word, and it became to mean anything other than what social justice actually means. This is the definition. Social justice is justice in terms of the distribution of wealth, opportunities, and privileges within a society. Individuality gives way to the struggle for social justice. If you are on board with that definition, uh, and you're willing to go so far as to put people out of their jobs or to seek to change entertainment in order to have these kind of uh, symbolic gestures that would lead towards social justice. You might be a social justice warrior. If you're anything else, then no, no, not likely. So why does the symbolism matter? Well, let's imagine for a moment that we're all at one Thanksgiving dinner together. We've all decided we're gonna sit around a table for one reason or another, we're family or whatever. We're going to enjoy a meal, uh, which is I think really the universal language, which is food and eating. We're gonna enjoy that meal and we have a couple choices. We could, one, decide that nobody should talk about religion or politics or any kind of issue that might bring up some bad feelings and some contention. The second option I see is that we could decide that this is actually a place for an open debate. We're going to have turkey, but we're also going to cross some words and perhaps make some enemies. And that's the point of the meal. Both of these options are great. Why? <laughs> because it's stated very clearly in the mission. If I'm going to Thanksgiving dinner expecting a fight because that's the point of it, then I'm going to participate in that fight, maybe even come prepared, uh, and probably have a pretty good time uh, you, you know, just participating in this fight. Or if we decide that it's about Thanksgiving and we're not going to talk about certain issues, then things get a little bit better. Uh, maybe you have some unspoken tension that might come up. But generally speaking, we're all agreeing that this family or this meal is overriding any of our personal political opinions. Now, there's a third option, and this third option is where I take an issue, and that is that we agree that we're going to sit down to this table or we assume that the point of this dinner is to sit down and eat some turkey and not have these political uh, points being scored. 
But the reality is that some participants at the table want a zero tolerance policy for anything that they view as a symbol for, uh, you know, against their ideology. And so it becomes this passive aggressive war, this very secretive thing, and this very symbolic step toward one's ideology rather than just admitting to what's going on. Here's what I mean and how we apply it to comics. So anytime I look up the culture war and comics, it doesn't seem to come very far from Comicsgate. In fact, every single article I can find brings up Comicsgate. Uh, And this is obviously (laughs) treating the entertainment world as less about talking about actual issues that are surrounding entertainment and more like a political campaign a way to label your opponent in a certain way so that you can control the narrative. That, from my understanding, is how the term comics gate started being used. Now, in this article, you probably read it, it's, it's uh, pretty well known around comics from The Guardian. Uh, the very first line that you look at here, the first quote, actually shows you and symbolizes this whole Thanksgiving dinner or this whole hobby that we're all trying to love and enjoy this shows exactly why this is that third option taken it says unless comics creators adopt a zero tolerance policy approach to racism and misogyny this abuse of power by fans will never end so fans have abusive power apparently according to the guardian and it is the job of comic book creators to give zero tolerance to racism and misogyny This zero tolerance policy can lead to all sorts of things. One of those might be interfering with somebody's publishing contract. Another one might be slipping in your ideology into comic books because it's for the greater good and because you want to push out those kinds of fans that you're not interested in entertaining. The truth is that your fans might not be as racist and misogynistic as you think, but they might be sick and tired of hearing you constantly grandstanding about why you're such a good person and why they're such a stupid person. If we take it back to the the Thanksgiving dinner analogy, maybe it's telling somebody what words they can and can't use. Maybe it's looking at what kinds of foods they put on their plate or how they eat their food or anything like that and making judgments about that person's worthiness or value system or any number of things that you could judge them on. Uh, And then slowly making changes to either make the dinner so uncomfortable that they want to leave or uh, I don't know, changing the way that they act, I guess, if you can, you know, attempt to do that. This is unacceptable. I don't call, I don't care what you call it. Do not care. (laughs) But I do believe this is still happening in comics. It's not this full out war, but there is this again, fight for the symbolism. Here's another example of seeking for that symbolism and to change it. The thing I like about this a little bit better is at least there's an attempt to make a good faith argument in, you know, why comics as they are, are bad. Anytime I look up anything like this about, uh, you know, the problems in comics, usually it has a lot to do with the art and you don't see as much with the writing. In this case, all of the male Avengers on the team are in, uh, I don't know, poses so that their posterior ends are pointed toward the viewer, except for Black Widow, who's posed in what might be a traditional male superhero pose. And I don't want to go down the rabbit hole of why men and women are posed differently in all of media, in all of photography, in media for men and media for women, because that's a lot to get into. And in fact, I have made, I know at least one video a long time ago on the topic. That's not the point of this video, but that is that people actually are seeking for symbolism in comics that needs to change because if you change the symbolism, you can change the culture. The question is, is this stuff still going on in comics? Is there a need, was there a zero tolerance policy that creators need to impose on their fans to control how they think and feel or boot them out of the fandom? If there's still a zero tolerance policy, that means that there's still going to be a culture where there's still going to be a reaction from people that are not happy about it. They're going to want to push back and change things. That's just the natural consequence of all this. So I'd love to know to, to know what you think about all this. Is there still a culture war in comics? I think so, but let me know what you think. And if you think I'm wrong, tell me why, please. Will it calm down? Do you ever see it calming down? I think it will eventually, but I don't know when exactly. I think it just sort of change the face of it uh let me know for sure and if you haven't bagged downcast yet please check it out there's not very much time left we're just talking about hours uh you can be among the over 900 backers that have backed it it's in the link in the description below thank you very much and i'll talk to you next time